What is up, everybody? Welcome back. Another episode here of Fast and Furious. So today's video is a little bit different for you guys, but um, just kind of going over some things that I was able to do on my John boat. So I haven't really showed you guys too much of the John boat a couple times, but not really like kind of in depth. But I did make a couple of uh, modifications to my John boat. Um, just for a reference, still got the tracker, still sitting there, still looking pretty, still doing his thing. But I actually got another boat. my 14 footer this is my low uh big john boat uh i think it's like 1442 or something like that um this is my low john boat so i've done some modifications to it uh not much actually to the boat itself but um basically just the things i've added to it that i think are going to make it a little bit better for fishing so to kind of go over what you need when you go out fishing i know sometimes just grab a john boat and go but a couple things you want to make sure that you always bring so i'll kind of go over that i have my flares in there and i'm actually put working on putting those in like a compartment obviously don't want them out in the middle of the water that's if you're in trouble your flare is going to be in trouble too so um but i got flares you of course you always want to have a throw cushion a um oars i got back here and of course a fire extinguisher is what i got back here um but as i panned around you guys kind of already saw what the video is about so i did do some other things to it if you remember my last video i went over this with you guys this is my portable affordable live well so this is my portable affordable live well that is ready to go for um some bass fishing or tournament or whatever the case may be got my my uh aerator there and everything looks good in the portable live well um of course i always bring a rope um in the boat you know when you're launching and stuff like that i always have a rope i did add these little lights i don't know if you guys can see that i got a little light strip on here as well for some lights in case i'm out there a little bit too late that i didn't want to be also have the um the front front light like the red and green light and then the back light i have those i just haven't put them on because i really never go out at nighttime but i thought this little light thing would be cool um if i do go out relatively early or i'm coming back and the sun's setting something like that just whatever it might make it easy i don't know it is what it is i like the lights they're cool and they're really cheap it's like 10 bucks so um got the little light switch there but um and this is my trolling motor guys all i have is a little back trolling motor i think i am going to add another one i have two trolling i have three trolling motors um, only one I'm putting on here right now. I may add a bow mount. I'm not sure. I may add a deck. I'm not sure. I don't know. I'm trying to see how this is going to work right here. Um, a lot of you guys, when I panned over though, you saw the other thing that I mentioned, and that is this, the Garmin. I've added the Garmin 93 UHD SV, I believe, onto my John boat. Now, I'll show you the graph on my actual big boat. It is... A hummingbird helix five <laughs> so i have a hummingbird helix five as my main graph that gives me my directions and everything in my big boat i did upgrade the front graph you guys remember got everything covered up right now but as you remember i did upgrade the front graph upgraded the trolling motor all that on this boat um already so basically what i did is i invested in the graph that i spend the most time at the one i spend the most time at i went and got a hummingbird helix seven mega imaging down imaging side image like everything on the graph that i'm gonna spend the most time and basically i just use that front graph to get me from point a to point b once i get there i hop up to the front of the boat and i go to work that's my offices in the front and the back but the majority of my fishing is spent at the front at the front office at the front of the boat so i just put the best graph up there um, i'm not going to upgrade that front that middle graph it's just it is what it is man it's but um on this one i do have a graph that's bigger than anything on that boat <laughs> on my 14 foot john boat so the thing is um this boat's easier for me to like get in and go and hit these local ponds so i'm gonna just like whatever boat's easiest for me to get in and out of easy i'm gonna use this time to 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 really dial in my skills on this graph like i'm gonna really use this time to really dial in this graph this four screen four different box screens like i'm really gonna use my time to dial in on this graph and um when i do that then i feel like at any time in my life i can take that nine off of there I can put it in place of the five. I can take that nine. I can put it on my new boat. It don't matter what I do. That nine is mine. So I can take it and use it anywhere I want. And huge shouts out to Hodges Marine, guys. I got this grab from Hodges Marine. Like that that place is really good. Them and uh, Russell Marine Products. Those two are two sites that I use a lot when I want to get these electronics now that I just learned about. I didn't know about them forever, but I know about them now. And I feel like a lot of the pro anglers now are going that route instead of like a low rand sponsorship or a hummingbird sponsorship. They're actually going with the company that just sells everything because then you can just get everything so you can get a low ranch ghost 
You can get the low res HDSs with the active target, and then you can throw a hummingbird on the middle and get them all from the same place and not have to worry about somebody sending you a nasty text message during the tournament talking about why you're using this and using instead of using that. So I feel like a lot of pros are going that route and I'm not mad at them for that. But anyways, this is the graph that I got. It's a Garmin 9. I don't have it powered on right now. The battery's actually charging. Haven't even taken the plastic off. I did power it on. I know it works, it's good to go. I dialed in the screens and a little bit of the settings, but I haven't even, I haven't done anything else with it. And honestly guys, it's on here, but it's not even really screwed on that good. It's really screwed in with like one or two screws. So it's right there right now. That's a really awkward placement because I'll be driving, but then I can see, and then the transducer as far as what I can see. I usually don't cast off the side of the corner or the back of the boat, but like I said, I'm trying to dial it in and I'm gonna show you why I put it right here and why I could do that. I'm gonna drill some holes, I think, and maybe put it up closer to the middle possibly but that also means like while i'm cruising i gotta then look up at that screen and then my transducer is behind so you know it's most of the time when you mount this you mount it on the front of the boat and then you mount it on the trolling motor so wherever the trolling motor is facing you see exactly what you see this is going to be a little bit different but that's okay most of the time i am sitting on this back seat i'm looking right here and i got my hand on the trolling motor and i think it'll be good for me to have it like right here look make a cast and go but the reason why i'm a kind of a little bit open-minded on what i'm doing is because of another thing i got so i'm gonna keep going if you guys i'm gonna show you the inside you guys see that it's a giant magnet you guys see that yeah buddy so it's a giant magnet connected to the transducer so the transducer for this this um garmin unit is held on by a giant magnet so there's a company that makes a portable transducer mount and basically what you can do is take that transducer anywhere on the boat that you want to put it on the boat with this magnetic mount. Now, they do recommend that you put it in that spot. They recommend that you put it on the back of the boat close towards the bottom and uh, kind of mount it that way. Um, it came from CVP Solutions. Uh, I think it's Fish Founder Mounts. Fish Founder, Founder Mounts. I'll leave the link below. But it's a portable transducer mount. You can take that mount and put it on any transducer. I could take it off of that and put it on the other boat. So to my point, what I was saying is if I decide I don't want to use it on this boat or I got a really big tournament and I want the best of the best on my boat with me, basically what I do is take the magnet off, put the magnet on the back of the tracker, take the graph. I, I've already got holes drilled in the top of the um, the uh, my unit over there. Take the holes, take that mount, drill it into the top of that thing, do it all the week before the tournament, and then boom, I got the Garmin on. I didn't have to drill any holes in the boat. I didn't have to do any of that, guys. I put it on the back with a magnet, and the magnet is rated big enough to, to, to actually go somewhere, especially on an aluminum boat. I got a shot on doing it with that, because this is an aluminum boat. This is an aluminum John boat is all this is. But I'll show you guys a little bit of the demonstration of the magnet. So basically, the magnet's on there. Give it a little twist. See, it's not, the magnet's going right with this. And it, it, ain't, it ain't letting this thing go anywhere. It ain't letting it go nowhere. So, but I can take it off. Magnet drops. Here it is. It is not sticking to any of that. But basically, I got that magnet right there. I go down there. Boom. You guys see that. Put your finger in between that. You will not have a finger. But now the mount's on. It's on there. This is locked in. It's got a secure little screw system here. A secure little screw system there. I ain't going more than three or four miles an hour because I only got a toller motor. And I'm done. That's it. The transducer is mounted on the boat, ready to rock, positioned to where I want to position. So honestly, I could take it from there. Let's say I want to, I'm going to mostly fish off the front of the boat up here. I could, in theory, mount it right there with the magnet inside, put the transducer right there. Boom, I'm done. I didn't have to run no cords. As you guys see, the cord is still right here. That's why I say this is extremely portable. All I have to do is take this. I'm going to mount the ends, put the proper ends on there. But basically take that. The cord's long enough run it to the battery, move the unit wherever I want it, and I'm good. So guys, that makes a lot more sense as far as for what I'm doing with this boat and with that unit. That's the reason why I got that unit, the reason why I got that mount, because I can take that anywhere. Even if, let's say I'm fishing a tournament with a buddy, he's got a unit. He's not too thrilled about the unit, you know, whatever's been acting up, ain't been doing, whatever the case may be, it really don't matter. All I do, grab my magnet, grab my unit, boom, throw it in there, throw it in there, we might got to drill a couple holes, but think about it. Is it worth drilling a couple holes in the, uh, the, 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 the deck or whatever? Honestly, I don't know if you even have to drill any holes. As long as the transducer's in the water and I put that sucker in my lap, it really, you know, I, I mean, I'm just being, I'm, I'm kind of telling a joke, but I'm kind of not. Like, we're trying to win. So if that's going to help us, then let's just do that. So hopefully this video helps you guys. A couple of updates that I've done to my boat. A few things. Again, 
I think it's going to be pretty cool. Honestly, I'm just looking at it now. I may could even mount this on top of my daggone live well. Get a fish, pick it up, drop the fish in, put the thing back down, and I could roll that thing all around the boat and put it wherever I want to put it at, right? Like, Rick, come on, think about it. Like, I'm trying to think outside the box here because everybody could do the same thing that everybody else is doing, but companies are coming up with some great new stuff. And I think that's a good idea. I think this is a really good idea. I'm curious to see how it really holds up in, with some speed. I am here curious to see. Um, the only thing is, it is a mount and it's a magnet. So the magnet's inside. So even if it does get knocked off or you run into something with it and it gets falling off, think about it. Unless it gets completely sliced, you still have the cord. So basically all it'll do is just be dangling in the water and you just pull your cord in, connect your magnet back and you're good. So I think that was their theory behind it. This cord is pretty thick. This cord for the um, transducer is pretty thick. If it gets knocked off, you just, you pick it up out the water and just whatever, um, whatever the case may be. But I'm just telling you guys, the odds of this thing just like, I got it screwed in there obviously, but it's not like, even if you knock it, it's still just, it twists. It still just goes up and twists. It doesn't like just completely fall off. Like it's still there and it's still showing. Transducer's still showing wherever it needs to show. And then I'm gonna spend some time casting out and seeing what it shows me on what I can see and what's going on. So that's where it's at. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. A couple of updates to the boat um, that I've done that you guys can see. Try to get a little shot there of everything so you guys can see what's going on. But got the Garmin unit on there, the live well, of course the trolling motor, and I have a battery and I'm actually gonna have two batteries now. So I'm gonna put a battery and a battery. So I have two batteries, one for the trolling motor, one for the uh, electronics unit. I'll have those two batteries. That way I'm not worried about losing power. I'm also gonna add a solar charger that I can just connect to the battery and get a kind of trickle charge all day. So mainly for the trolling motor so that if the battery's running down on the trolling motor, it'll kind of trickle charge throughout the day and at least not, it won't balance out, but it'll at least give me a little bit more power maybe stay on the water a little bit longer or whatever the case may be. And then obviously worst case scenario, if the battery dies, you just switch it over to the, the battery that's running the electronics, cut the electronics off, or switch it over to that and then you can get yourself back. So I have two batteries in here, one trolling motor, um may add another trolling motor i'm not sure a couple things to be determined but either way i'm having fun with it i'm bringing you guys along with me while i do it so as always you guys are awesome i appreciate you guys tuning into the channel can't wait for the next video you guys stay tuned for that make sure you hit that subscribe button turn that bell on so you guys get notified when i make new videos and i will catch you guys on the next one as always my bass and furious friends